So this is kind of going to be a My Hero episode review to a degree. Um, I'm not going to do a ton of these, but I just, I loved it when the chapter came out where they celebrated Christmas, which was chapter 242, uh, where it's, you know, you get to see all of the UA kids just like all of class 1A just having fun and celebrating Christmas with each other. And just like one of those moments where it's like that, where it kind of turns into a little bit of like a slice of life and you get like just them, them having fun, them being a class them being a family type thing. And I figured that, you know, I kind of did the, um, the uh, video a little while ago about uh, Izuku, um, you know, will will the class be able to get through to Izuku? So I'm like, okay, let's just take a moment and kind of look back on more of like a happier moment, I guess, um, in regards to that. Um, so yeah, so obviously this is going to be a review to a degree of episode uh, 101, which is based off of chapter, or roughly uh, chapter uh 242 I think it also was like 241 is in there as well because they kind of combine them into this chapter um and so yeah so I kind of broke out a couple of Christmas shirts and I got like my my hero shirts are out here and such and I got like a this is joy to the galaxy over here with baby Yoda and then that's just Snoopy in a Santa outfit because that's what I had on hand the other option was the Grinch and given the fact that when it gets closer to Christmas, I might do a bunch of like reviews of Christmas movies, um, give or take. At least one of those is going to be either the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or the, um, the Grinch with Benedict Cumberbatch. I might just do all three at some point. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes because I love Christmas. Um, I'm also going to do like a review of a bunch of different like uh, Halloween movies like Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse Bride and like some of the Scooby-Doo movies and stuff like that that are, you know, Halloween type movies and such like that. But that's for a little while down the road. This is my hero. So back to my hero. So uh, the episode starts off with where we get like this slight recap of like, well, something happened in Deca City and the heroes, you know, most of the students don't know what it was. Uh, what we see is we see Dig a City, and then we see it just get leveled and destroyed with smoke plumes and ash clouds everywhere. Then we see Shiki, we see Shigaraki <laughs> show up, and he's like, you know, half naked, and he's like laughing maniacally, and like destroying the flower, because what did the flower do to him? And yeah, 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 flower, flower. I know we find out later on in like the flashback that we get from him that will be shown at some point in possibly the next season, depending on how the season ends out, um, where we get the flashback about his sister. So Hana is flower, if I remember correctly, and he stepped on a flower. Don't remember if he did that in the manga or not. Um, <laughs> um, but we see that. And then we cut to where we have um, Bakugo and uh, Shoto, and this takes place just after they finish their, um, got their provisional licenses, so they can go up against, you know, heroes and everything, they're officially heroes type thing. Um, you know, they finished their remedial classes and everything, and they got their um, licenses. It's assuming that so did, like, Inasa and Kami, um, and, uh, some of the other students that were, like, part of this particular group of the, uh, the remedial classes for that. Um, so it's sometime after that, and Shoto and Katsuki are, of course, being interviewed, um, by just, just some interview lady that's there talking about, like, the group of villains that they took down, um, like, a half hour after they got their licenses. And the reporters, you know, are you guys friends? Shoto, yes, Katsuki, no! <laughs> just, like, yeah, Katsuki is Katsuki. Kachan is Kachan. Um, he's just like, no, we're not friends. And Shoto is like, yes, we're friends. And then it's just like this whole moment where it's just like, Shoto kind of gets the entire interview, Bakugo is completely cut out, and Bakugo is just like, just not there. Or like, just as, as uh, Denki puts it when they watch the video on their phones, just angry blip in the corner. Um, and that there were other interviews that happened that were also super bad in regards to this. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, Denki and uh, uh, Sero are, you know, kind of laughing at, you know, Kachan's um, predicament in regards to this. And he's just, just so annoyed. Like, why do they keep cutting me out of the interviews? Although he's like, why do they keep doing that? You know, so that's just funny to watch for him. Um, and the rest of the class are just kind of like, you know, you need to be better about this, Kachan. You need to calm down. 
uh, you know, and this is where they get the, uh, this is where, um, you know, uh, Mount Lady shows up with uh, Midnight. And we get, like, the uh, the sexy pose, of course, because why not? It's a shonen manga, so shonen anime. So, yeah, sexy pose of women in, you know, skin-tight clothing. Go for it. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> and they jiggle uh, because reason. Uh, so they show up, and they are going to be teaching the students about media, uh, you know, relations with the media and things like that. To a degree, the students have already seen kind of the way that their teachers have to interact with the media, and they've kind of already had like a taste of being around the media, like way back at the beginning of the series when like all those reporters are around the outside of the gate uh, at the school when the students are showing up after it's, you know, told to the public that, oh, All Might's teaching at UA. So it's just like, how do you like being around All Might and everything? And then, of course, you know, there was a press conference, of course, that, you know, Aizawa and King Vlad, or uh, Vlad King, and I don't remember if Nezu was there or not, but those two at the very least had to do in regards to what had happened at the training camp. So the students are aware that the media is something that they're going to have to be aware of. Um, and to a degree, Izuku and Shoto and uh, Ida have already had a slight taste of this as well, given the fact that when they took down Stain, there was some video about that that got out that showed, you know, Izuku almost getting kidnapped by a Nomu and then staying killing the Nomu to save Izuku. So we'll see what happens with that. But um, they're also aware of the fact that, like, the, uh, the, the police told everyone that, no, it was Endeavor that took down the hero killer, Stain. So it's not these three UA students. It's this, you know, these UA students that don't even have, like, their provisional licenses or interns at this point in time. Uh, you know, just, you know, like the week-long internships. We can't have them be the ones that took down the hero killer, so they just credit it to um, Endeavor. But they end up talking, you know, uh, also one of the things that they showed as a way of, like, showing, like, the media's presence in regards to how um, heroes are portrayed is, you know, some heroes have better light, some heroes don't have a very good light. All Might seems to have a pretty good media presence even now, um, you know, even though he's no longer fully, you know, all might and I am here and everything. He's still this little media darling that like they still love to see. And we kind of got that at like the, uh, I think it was like the first episode of like, not this season, but like the season prior to that or whatever, where we get to see, um, um, like that, uh, news reporter guy, the journalist or whatever with like the camera cork that showed up. It was just an anime only thing at the recap at the beginning, but he was still kind of interesting. Um, like he talked to the class and he talked to Izuku. Um, and he, you know, snapped a picture of All Might. Um, but, and I am going to do a video where I talk about like some of the different aspects of being a hero, like different things that heroes have to either be aware of or that they do. Some of it's like they specialize in this. Other times it's, oh, this is just something that they have to put up with. So some of that will include media and rescue and villain fighting, of course. Um, but that'll be a separate video. But, uh, you know, they, one of the things that they show is all of these different, um, people that have been in Deca City, like saying, oh no, the heroes did what they were supposed to do. This isn't their fault. And uh, those of us that are aware of the manga, or that have read the manga that are not anime only, are aware of the fact of what happened in Deca City, and we're aware of what is inside of Deca City. Um, hmm, so, um, I guess that qualifies as manga spoilers for anyone that doesn't know this yet, but uh, that's where the, liber uh, uh, the Liberation Army is, the Meta Liberation Army. That's where they're based out of. Uh, if I remember correctly, is Deka City. Uh, that's where a Detronat is from. And uh, that's where a Redestro is. And now that's kind of, if I remember correctly, I think that's what it is. And then we have the, um, that's where the uh, League of Villains, uh, League of Villains currently is, because as we see in the subsequent episodes after that, we see Hawks going and talking to the League of Villains and being around the, uh, you know, the uh, Liberation Army and everything. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, they still have to do the My Villain Academy arc, but we'll see what happens with that one, if that's going to be at, like, the end of this season or the beginning of the next season before they do, like, the hospital raid arc or so, uh, where we get into the whole Meta Liberation War type of thing. Um, but, you know, so we have all these moments where, like, the students are just like, you know, we have to start learning about the media, so this is where they bring in Mount Lady and, um, <laughs> you know, Midnight and, you know, Mineta's like, why is she here? She's like the most celebrity hungry TV personality is. And then she like slapped Mineta and I love that. Unfortunately, I could not find a good image that was not the manga image. So unfortunately, you just get to picture Mount Lady slapping Mineta. Still a good picture though. Um, 
and they go out and they get into their hero costumes and then they're all getting ready to do this big interview phase and uh you know we have you know shoto is there and he's kind of the first one that gets to go through the interview phase and you know so it's all you know mount lady talking to him and everything they have this like this whole stage set up and everything and uh one of the things that of course happens is it's you know mount lady telling him you know just like pretend that you just took down a giant villain or whatever okay now you know it's just like just like answer all these questions or whatever and like at one point he's just like if i smile it'll kill them or like whatever the other ones was it was it um <laughs> it's like she's just like oh if a bright boy like you showed up and you know if a boy like you like you showed up and saved my life i don't know if i what would happen to my heart and he's like do you have heart problems and she's just like oh my god he's so sweet and he's so my type i'm like back off lady i know you're technically not extremely that much older than them but back off <laughs> um back off lady back off and like there's that but then there's also like shoto you know shows off his you know heaven heaven piercing ice wall um to demonstrate some of his you know his quirk and his you know signature moves his special moves and everything and then she also goes like you know you know what was it if the um what was the uh what is it that she says she says something along the lines of you know smile more and it'll make them you know more happy or whatever or it's like you know the ladies might just you know faint or whatever and he's like my smile might kill them and i just i love shoto because he is just so like this innocent thing to some degree because it's like i highly doubt endeavor encouraged shoto to have any interest in any gender probably endeavor from what we understand of him would probably lean more at least making sure that uh shoto may be more on the uh like girls but <laughs> endeavor might surprise us in that aspect because like you know i'll use kaido as an example kaido at least seemed okay with the fact that yamato wanted to identify as male as opposed to female you know and kaido is well aware of what gender his child was i don't think kaido was that horrible of a parent that he didn't know at least his child's birth gender <laughs> um but endeavor may at least be like a step up from kaido and endeavor might be at least be like okay yeah sure fine go ahead be bi be gay be whatever just you know train i don't care you know just as long as you put all of your time into training i don't care what you're attracted to <laughs> but shoto that wasn't a main that wasn't something that shoto really was all that interested in i'm assuming um but then again it's also like he's you know we'll see what else happens with that on that front um i kind of like shoto and momo but you know then i also lean towards like you know shoto and you know izuku would be fine or shoto and bakugo are also fine in my opinion but i don't know exactly what's going to happen with that in the anime or in the uh, manga but so you know mount lady's interviewing shoto and then she also starts interviewing the rest of the students because she makes this point to them where she's like, okay, here's the thing. Like, why do we have to do all of this stuff? Why do we have to show off our moves? Why, you know, it's like all the classes just like, well, why do we have to do all this? And she just like looks at them. And I don't think it, that it's her talking down to them because she remembers Mount Lady's not that much older than them. I mean, like she's out of UA. We see her at the beginning of the series. That's like her debut um as a pro hero herself and she may have been a sidekick for a little while but she is very much probably not extremely that far out of high school um you know out of ua or whatever school it was she went to i think she went to ua i don't remember um i don't i don't remember if she's a ua alumni or not but she went through a lot of stuff and she already is well aware of the fact that media presence is very important and we do see this change in her as well throughout the course of the series she started off with just only wanting like the media attention and everything and then she shifts more and she you know she protects you know she's part of the raid the hideout raid arc when they're trying to save bakugo from the league and she you know helps protect bakugo and the others when you know they're trying to get bakugo out of there and then of course we see more of this of how hard she's willing to fight in regards to what will happen in the um the liberation war arc when she's trying to help take down uh giganto machina and you know all of that that goes on with that and we'll see that in the anime and she works so hard to try to take that dang that dang monster down um just as hard as the students do and as midnight does and everything and she tries just as hard and she's giving the kids advice in the fact of you guys are so new at this she calls them like little baby first years i think is what the, one of the translations she was like i know that all of you are not extremely familiar with the media yet 
but what happens is you need to be able to have a good media presence. The media can kind of make or break you as a hero. And that's why you need to be able to show off your moves. You need to make sure that your presence is known. You need to make sure that uh, the civilians, that the citizens, are aware of the fact that they can trust you, that you are there to save them. And we see that, and that gives us a glimpse of, you know, why hero society does crumble so quickly um, in, you know, after what happens with the Liberation Army, because the entire country just starts questioning, can we actually trust them? Um, are these heroes actually worthy of all this trust and admiration we put into them? And, you know, all my, or Mount Lady is just like, you just need to try to figure out, you know, what kind of image you want to portray to them. And then it's just, we go through like all this, well, we don't go through all the students. And then all the students just kind of go through like their names and kind of like a site intro and everything for them. Not all, we don't see all of them, but like we see a fair number of them. Like he is like, I chose Ingenium because that's my brother's name and I want to be like him and he's a great hero. And then it's just like, you know, it's which is too moment, you know, I'm, I'm creative and I just want to help make sure that everybody's safe and everything. I don't remember exactly what Momo says. Uh, but, you know, it's like, I'm, you know, I'm creative and everything. And it's just like adorable. They're like, oh, Raka, I'm a gravity, the, uh, the gravity hero, the outer space hero, whatever it was. And, you know, like, she's, like, floating sideways. And then, like, you know, it's just like, you know, it's like, they all just want to make sure that everybody's safe. You know, Tokoyami, you know, I'm, uh, what is it, Sukuyomi, I think is his hero name. You know, just, like, all of us, you know, very intense type of a thing. And, like, and, uh, <laughs> you know, we hear, like, um, Mount Lady going, you go, you're so sincere, you're oozing sincerity, you're oozing charisma, you know. You're, you know, I feel safer already, you know, you're, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, like, you know, um, Red Riot, you know, uh, <laughs> Kirishima is just, like, you know, you know, he's, like, he's, I don't remember exactly what he says, he's just, like, I'm Red Riot and everything, and then, like, you know, we have, like, you know, uh, Ojiro is there, you know, little tail man, and then we see Mina as, you know, she's, you know, Pinky, I still wish Alien Queen they would have gone with, that would have been great, um, but they didn't, unfortunately, and then we see, you know, Denge, who's gonna be Charge Vault and everything, um, and then we see, um, uh, Shoji, uh, who is, of course, he's the tentacle, or tentacle, just whatever thing is. And then we cut to Bakugo, he's just like, screw you, I'm not gonna make a speech, just trust me. And everybody's just like, oh my god, this is not good. <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't go near this. Maybe you shouldn't go near the media. And, like, Midnight basically tells us all, maybe you should help Bakugo kind of, you know, do the same thing you do where you avoid the media. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, it makes sense for Izawa to avoid the media. He's an underground hero. He doesn't want to know, he doesn't want the public to know exactly who he is. He doesn't want the public to know what he looks like because then if he has to, like, infiltrate somewhere, it's going to make it a lot harder for him to do that. Uh, that's why I think that makes sense. And, like, that'll go over, like, one of the other aspects in regards to, like, heroes and stuff like that when I go over that in, like, that video. But uh, she's like, you know, maybe you should, you know, keep him away from the media. And and all my, or uh, as always, she's like, eh, maybe I should. And then we cut to Izuku, who is just so, like, stiff and jittery and just like, oh my god, what do I do? It's a camera, it's a camera, what do I do? He's just like so, so blocky. And, like, yeah, then, you know... The others are just like, oh my god, Izuku, calm down. And, you know, they you know they bring up the fact about his his new quirk, or the new aspect of his quirk, because they just think, like, it's maybe a new um, adjustment, because, like, you know, when he powers up, they just see all of this, like, kind of lightning and stuff coming off of him. Um, so maybe they kind of assume that, oh, maybe this, this, uh, this black stuff, this black whip aspect is just maybe, like, a slightly different aspect of that lightning. It's probably just, like, what he's kind of playing it off as. And he tries to do, you know, he does a demonstration, you know, and he talks about, like, he's, like, muttering away about, you know, all this other stuff about, like, his, you know, it's, like, his name and his, you know, how he names his powers, his attacks and everything. And I just feel so sorry for all ladies because Azuka's just, like, muttering and muttering and muttering. And she's just like, oh, my God, make it stop. It's just, like, the look on her face. I just find that so funny. And then, um, you know, we have Zuko, remember, talking, talking to, you know, Daigoro Banjo, and how he's kind of pictured, you know, like, all these locks around this door that lead to Black Whip, and how he has to, you know, he has to work on being able to, like, open up that door just a little bit out of time, and he sends out, like, this, you know, a slight bit, and then it just, like, poofs out of existence, and he's just like, yay, 
And like everybody else is just like, oh god. <laughs> Why? That was just sad type of a thing. And then we cut to uh, Nezu going to talk with All Might. And, uh, you know, you know, All Might seems to, I mean, like, you know, the teachers are all, of course, living on campus and everything. And All Might seems to uh, have spent quite a bit of time in his, uh, in his, you know, house or dorm area. And the dog started barking. Uh, so, you know, I have the light back here because, you know, all the different colors in it. I just have it on, like, fade just because it's, like, there's not really any specific color I can set it on. I mean, I could have done, like, flip it between, like, red and green. But I figured, like, let's just, just let it go through all the colors. Because we talk about all of, like, class 1A in this. So, we'll go with that. Um, but, <laughs> the talk is no longer barking. Um, but, you know, All Might and, of course, the rest of the teachers live on campus now. And Nezu goes to visit All Might. And All Might is currently working on this the notebook that's about, you know, all the different past users of, you know, All for One. Or uh, One for All. And he's, you know, going through and he's finding all of these different things that he can. Because he mentions that there's not a lot of records kept from the beginning, from the early days of Quarks. Which, I mean, can kind of be understandable since it was kind of random. And some people, I guess, were a little more likely to want to hide the fact that they had Quarks. Particularly if their Quark was, like, easily hidden. If their Quark is something like, you know, you know, Shoji's or, you know, Koda's or some of these other ones that are very blatant. That is like, oh, you walk by this person, you can tell that some form they have a quirk one way or another. Whereas with, like, Izuku, you walk by Izuku or a rock or even Bakugo, you can kind of be like, okay, well, maybe they have a quirk, maybe they don't. You know, if you walk by All Might, you wouldn't assume that he had a quirk. By technicality, All Might does not have a quirk, and when he was a kid, he did not have a quirk. But that's beyond the point. But, like, you know, there's other people, it's like, you know, you walk by Ida... You know, if you look at his legs, you can definitely tell that he has a quirk. Um, so there's, like, all these other different things that they point out that, you know, it's like, you know, they were really hard to come by. And, you know, records are really, you know, sparse in the beginning. And we know that this is going to be the notebook that All Might gives to um, Izuku and Bakugo very soon. Um, and Nezu and All Might just kind of talk a little bit. And then we cut to this meeting that's going on between the teachers and Nezu. Um, and like they're just talking about the fact of okay, so it looks like we're going to have to start doing the internships again. And this is explained to be a um, kind of a order that is sent down by the Public Safety Commission. Um, they're of course the ones that assign, you know, oh, you get to be a hero, you're going to be this, you're going to be this, that type of a thing. And you know, I love the fact that uh, Nezu is just like curled up and is like just snuggled up next to Azawa in his scarf, and Azawa is just like can't you, don't you have your own chair? And Nezu's answer is, no, your scarf is warm. Back to the meeting. <laughs> so a lot of the times when we see Nezu, he's inside of his always scarf if they're in the same area. <laughs> Which I just find so funny. I don't know why, but I do. Because, like, we see this, not at the USJ, but we see this at, you know, when they're ready to do, like, the, the student's final exam for the semester, that, like, Nezu is inside of his always scarf. And it's just like, um, does he just, like, crawl inside of his, you know, uh, Izawa's sleeping bag and, like, just snuggle with Izawa sometimes? And Izawa's just, like, so exasperated with the tiny mouse that is so smart that he's just like, I can't deal with this. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I can't make him leave. He's so cute. <laughs> um, but, like, they're basically like, okay, we have to send the students back into internships at different hero agencies. It's a required thing. All of the students that are in the hero course from probably from you know all the way that are from you know class you know three you know that are third years second years first years all the ones that are in the hero courses have to be on internships you know i think it's stated to be like either during the christmas break or just after the christmas break uh, because they're getting ready to head into christmas break um and so they're all like getting ready to do that and like tell that to their students and like some of them are like i don't think this is a good idea are we sure that this is safe? You know, and Nezu's just like, we don't have a choice. This is what the hero, this is what the safety commission wants us to do. So they have to. Uh, and then we cut to uh, Izawa, or uh, Mid, uh, sorry, uh, All Might, or Toshinori, is uh, off with the detective with the lie detector quirk, which I cannot pronounce his freaking name. He's cool, but I can't pronounce his name because he's like this uh, fairly major character in uh, Vigilantes as well because his sister becomes friends with Crawler. Um, with the uh, Koichi and uh, that. 
and uh, vigilantes, but I cannot pronounce his freaking name off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Um, but like they're um, off doing some research on something, probably something to do with have to do with Deka City or some other things. Um, and then they're talking to Nezu and, you know, Nezu's like, well, are you going to be coming back to the school all night? And he's just like, why? Did something happen to Izuku? And Nezu's just like, wow, you really kind of are out of touch. Don't you know what today is? And then it's like, it's Christmas! <laughs> um, so we get to see Class 1A all decked out for Christmas and everything. In all honesty, I had wanted to dig out some of our Christmas decorations, but they're kind of buried in the garage since, the, since this is, you know, June. Um, <laughs> uh, so no Christmas decorations, unfortunately. So you just get the shirts. Otherwise I would be in a Santa hat right now, but that's not happening. Um, unfortunately. Um, so we get to see class 1A all, you know, the, the, their, their dorm is like all decked out in Christmas decorations. They've got a tree, they've got all this food and everything. They're all in like different, you know, uh, red outfits or green outfits for Christmas. The majority of them seem to be in the green outfits, so I don't know if there's like the just pick a color and that's the color you get, or if it's like, no, no, these ones get red, these ones get green, this is what we're sticking with. But, <laughs> you know, so we have all of them like kind of just, you know, there and happy and everything. And like, um, all of their hats have different like, um, baubles on the end of them, and I love this. So, we have Araka, and she has, let's see, I wrote all of them down to make sure I didn't miss any of them. Um, <laughs> so, what we have, we have, so, uh, Sue has a little frog on hers. Um, uh, Ochako, or Araka, has a, a little planet that looks like Saturn on hers. Um, uh, Jiro has a little musical note. Um, <laughs> Mina has, like, it looks like a little bit of, like, a, like a piece of slime or something on the back of hers. Um, mostly, I, it, it kind of looks like slime, I wasn't sure, um, because, like, her slime can be different colors depending on, like, how, um, I guess it's how, um, soluble it is. Um, and then we have, uh, Toru, uh, so, uh, Hagakure, Invisible Girl. She doesn't have any, so I'm assuming, um, it's just not there because, you know, she's invisible, because it's based on, like, either their quirk or their personality is what the little bobble is about. Um, Sato, uh, Sugar Man, of course, has a little, like, a candy thing, like a, you know, classic candy in a wrapper. Um, Ciro, uh, Cellophane, uh, has a, uh, tape dispenser, a little tape dispenser on his. Um, uh, Aoyama, um, Can't Stop Sparkling, or Can't Stop Twinkling, whichever one it is. Um, has like a star on his. Um, uh, Kirishima, uh, Red Riot, of course, has a, um, a, <laughs> a, um, little, looks like a red rock on the back of his. Um, Momo has, you know, Kriyeti has a little book on hers, uh, which is more a reference to how smart she is and the fact that she, you know, has to have all this knowledge to be able to create, create all the things that she does. Um, and then we have Mineta, who just has, like, this purple ball on his, which, of course, is pop-off quirk. Um, you know, um, Grape Juice, I think, was his hero name, if I remember correctly. Then we have Ida, who, besides having, like, a little tailpipe on, like, his hat as, like, his bauble, he is also the one wearing the Santa, <laughs> the, uh, Santa beard, which is just funny. Um, and then we have, uh, Izuku who has, like, this, uh, green, you know, green fuzzy stuff on the back of his, which is a reference to, like, A, his hair is green, so green fuzzy hair, but also, like, it's the color of, like, the lightning that comes off of him when he uses his quirk. Uh, and then, of course, we have, uh, Kasuki, who's yelling at everyone and is not in a Santa outfit. He's the only one that's not in a Santa outfit, and we have this moment where it's just, like, you know, Mina's trying to get the coat on him and everything, and he's just, like, no, and he's yelling at her, and then, like, uh, Kir uh, Kaminari, like, dashes over and, like, throws the hat on him and has, like, a little explosion on the back, and Kazuki just keeps glaring at them every time they try to get the coat on him and everything. Uh, Mina keeps trying to get the coat on him again and again and again, so they've probably been practicing, like, stealth attacks and everything, um, and he just keeps glaring at her along with everybody else. Um, and then Denki, yeah, but yeah, uh, Kasuki has, like, this little explosion on the back of his hat. Um, Denki has, like, a little, you know, lightning bolt on his um, uh, charge bolt, you know, because it's quirk and everything, uh, Fuku, uh, <laughs> uh, Fukuyame, uh, sorry, Fumakage, sorry, Fumakage has, like, this little, this little purple feathers on his hat and everything, and it's kind of, like, fit around his, you know, bird head, so it's kind of spiky, so that's kind of funny, um, 
uh, Coda, of course, Anima has a little bunny on his hat because uh, he also has a bunny for a pet. And then he's also just like, he can talk to animals. Um, and then we have Shoto, who it took me a little while to try to find this in the picture because I couldn't find an individual picture of like Shoto wearing his hat. Uh, so uh, where you can see the bottle, but he's like, his bobble is like half red and half white because of his hair. And then we have Shoji. And uh, Shoji, again, took a little bit for me to be able to find the, the correct angle for it to see it. But he has like this little octopus or squid thing on the back of his hat. Um, that is a reference to, of course, he's, you know, the tentacle. Um, and then we have Ojiro, who is, uh, has uh, like yellow fuzz on the back of his hat, which is a reference to, of course, uh, his tail. Because his tail and his hair, you know, the, the fuzz on his tail is yellow and his hair is yellow. Um, so we have all of them. And they're all just relaxing and having fun and eating and just laughing and talking and everything. And uh, one of the things that comes up is, you know, like they're talking about like hero internships. And, you know, Kirishima is talking to Izuku, like, well, you're going to go back to Night Eye Agency and everything. Centipeter's in charge there now. He was pretty fun. And, like, Izuku, like, remembers calling, like, Centipeter. So we get, like, this image of, like, and I showed this episode to my mom because it was just so adorable. And, like, her reaction when she saw Centipeter was just, like, the what the is that <laughs> what uh, huh and i'm like yeah i don't get it either but that's what he is um <laughs> um the dog's barking again but like mom's reaction to center peter was just like the huh which was just really funny to watch um <laughs> when she saw him but it was like Peter and bubble girl are there and she's like no that's not gonna work you can't come over we don't have uh we have too much stuff that we have to do right now with sir being you know, with Night Eye being, you know, dead, which is just sad because I still get sad that Night Eye is dead. I really liked Night Eye and that made me sad in the anime and it made me sad when I read it in the manga and I know I'm going to be very sad. Um, I was sad with what happened with Midnight in the manga and I'm going to be probably crying when I see that in the anime um, for certain parts of that. Um, yeah, um, but like she was like, well, and I can't go, you know, go with Red Rye or I can't go and study with Gran Torino because he's busy too. Um, so he's kind of in limbo for the work study. So they're all just like talking about, you know, well, what can we do for the work studies and everything? Um, you know, well, what can we do for this and what can we do for that and everything? And what ends up happening is, you know, they're all just talking about this, but you know, well, I can go and do this and I can go and do that. And then they ask Bakugo, you know, what are you going to do about that? You know, what are you going to be? you know, where are you going to go? Are you going to go back to Best Genus or are you going to do something else? And Bakugo, we have this moment where it's like we see Bakugo reading like this news article about um, Best Genus about, you know, that he's kind of gone missing. And Bakugo is kind of, uh, Bakugo is worried about Best Genus at this point in time. And we get the moment where, um, you know, he's remembering when he was on the internships and he was talking to Best Genus about, like, his hero name. And he's just like, God Explosion Murderer, King Explosion Murderer, God King Explosion King God Murderer, whatever. And, and, and like, you know, Best Genus just has, like, Bakugo, like, tied up with, like, all the fibers and everything. And he's just, like, brushing his hair down to make it lie flat. And he's just like, you're such a child. And it's just like, you know, when you've actually come, you know, once you're a hero... And once you've actually come up with a real name, come back and tell me that name and I'll bring you back and you can work with me again. And I like how they showed that. Um, they like that we got that reminder there because as we know at the end, uh, those of us that read the manga or that are caught up on the manga uh, are aware of the fact that at the end of the um, liberation, paranormal liberation war arc, whatever you want to call it, that... Um, Best Gina shows back up. Everybody thinks that he's kind of dead or just missing right now. The the villains think that he's dead because of Hawks. Um, but, like, he shows up and he, you know, saves, you know. It was, like, this huge kind of, like, not trump card at the end, but he shows up and he saves him and everything. And Bakugo does get to tell him, you know, my name is Dynamite and everything. You know, the explosion hero, Dynamite, whatever. Um, <laughs> and so we get that. But we get Bakugo remembering that and he's just like, I don't really have anywhere else that I can go at the moment. And they're just like, and they're like, Manetta, and it's like, what are the few times where I agree with Manetta? And Manetta is just like, no, 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 we don't want to talk about that right now. We don't want to talk about that right now. We are going to eat and have fun and enjoy Christmas. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, as much as I don't care for Manetta, and I mentioned this in the last video, in the uh, video about Deku versus Class 1A, 
Um, yeah, no, I don't usually care for Mineta, but there are a few times where I agree with him. One of these is this moment here where it's just like, no, no, I agree with him. Just don't focus on that right now. Focus on Christmas. Just celebrate Christmas right now. You're going to have a plenty of other things you're going to have to do till after that, but just focus on Christmas right now. And what ends up happening is, you know, then Sato comes over and he's just like, yeah, I agree with Mineta. And like, you know, and he's just like this, like perfectly made turkey. I'm just like, um... And it's like, of course, everybody's the answer is Sugar Man can cook real food. Um, because, of course, you know, we know that he's really good at making, you know, sweets and cakes and candies and stuff like that because of his pork, but he also knows how to make real food. Um, so I just find that adorable. And then we have it that, like, Azawa shows up and he has Eri with him. And we get the class, like, I'll just, like, you know, he shows up and he's just like, he's, you know, the class is just like, oh my god, Aerie, you're so cute. And they're just like fawning over her and everything. And I love Aerie in here. She's like, um, I'm supposed to say trick or treat? And as always like, no, that's not quite right. And then she goes, uh, well, I think in like one of the translations, it's like demon be gone or something. And it looks like she's throwing water or like trying to throw something. But then in like the English translation that they had in the anime, it's just like in sickness and in health, like throwing stuff at the class. And like, they're all just like, oh my God, she's so cute. Um, <laughs> and it's like, because it's like, obviously it's like the demon be gone is like, you know, like devil be gone or whatever the hell type of a thing is just kind of like this concept of, okay, so she's throwing this stuff. What's going to happen here? It's like this, you know, she's, you know, getting all of her holidays mixed up or different things mixed up. And like, as always, she's like, no, you're, you're, you're getting further away. Cause like Demon Beyond, I guess, would be like either Halloween or as always explaining to her exorcisms, I guess, maybe. And like the, the sickness and in health that they do is like, you know, it's like, you know, wedding, you know, it's like, you know, their vows and sickness and in health and everything. And like, she's just like, oh my God, she's so cute. And they like go and like, they start, you know, she just like starts talking to everyone. And then she like gives her a rocket she like holds out like a bunch of painted easter eggs to a rocket and i was like i brought you painted eggs and a, a, a rocket's just like well that's the wrong holiday i also but they're so cute so i don't care <laughs> and azawa i swear to god i freaking hope azawa adopts arian canon because she deserves it and he is the closest thing to a father that she has at the moment with like azuku and mario as like older brothers um <laughs> I swear to God, I want or I want Azawa to adopt her. I want that to become canon, because that's in so many anime, so many of the so many of the uh, fanfics and everything. Azawa adopts her, and I just want that to be the case, because um, she deserves to be happy and have him as a dad, and he obviously just adores her. Um, but he would give like the same attention to any of the students, but like she basically freaking lives with him. So yeah, and like they're like you know, you know how's Mirio and everything, and like he's celebrating with his own class. And, you know, Ari goes off and, like, is talking to the rest of the kids. And the girls are just fawning over her because she's so adorable. I mean, like, the rest of the class has met Ari at this point in time. Uh, they met her when, uh, some of them, I think, met her at the, uh, the cultural festival, of course. Um, because Azuku explained, it was like, well, there's this girl and everything. And she's, you know, this girl, like, they, like, he was able to tell them about what happened, um, with the, uh, the Yakuza arc, with the uh, overhaul and everything. And, like, what Ari had been through and everything. He was probably able to tell them about that later. Um... And he explained to them, you know, who Eri was. And, like, since then, you know, Eri, of course, came to the cultural festival. And they were perfectly fine with Azuki wanting to be part of the dance crew and everything. So that way she could see him dance and be very happy about it. And then, of course, we see everything that happens with um, Eri in regards to Eri comes and stays with them at UA and everything. Um, she, you know, not too long after what happens at the cultural festival, she comes and stays with them. Um, so the rest of the class has met Ari several times, and she's probably been by to visit a few times, but this is Christmas, and they're just having fun. And Izuku comments to Azawa, that, oh, Ari's horn looks like it's got gotten bigger and everything, and Azawa's like, yeah, uh, she's been practicing and everything, and, um, she's been working really hard to make sure that she can, you know, she's been taking to heart what you said about, you know, about how, and this, I'm gonna go over this at some point in, like, a video about Ari herself. Um, where it's just like, Suzuka makes the comment that like, you know, Ari is just so terrified that her court can do nothing but bad. Um, but, you know, Izuku points out, you know, he's like, well, you know, it's like, if you take a knife, you know, if you use it, you can take a knife and hurt people, but you can also use a knife to be able to cook and make amazing food and everything like that. So you can also use a knife to help people. 
So it all depends on how you focus your tool, what tools you're given and what you do with them. The tools itself are not evil, it's what you do with them. And Ari takes that very much to heart. And that goes along with the, you know, the, the good and the bad type of a thing that I want to talk about for my hero. And what ends up happening is, you know, Izuku and the rest of the class start celebrating more and like Ari's just having so much fun and everybody's just laughing and smiling and eating and having fun and all this fun stuff. And it's just so adorable. And like Ari gets to eat cake and she's just like, oh my God, this tastes so good. And like, I'm pretty sure a lot of the class helped with this, helped with making this dinner and everything, but Sato was probably one of the main people. And then we don't know who else in the class can cook. I would assume Momo can cook to a degree because she's probably had like that interest in cooking and everything anyway, because her quirk involves food to a degree. So she probably has some form of cooking experience. And then of course, in a lot of the com in a lot of the uh, fanfics, of course, they always make it like, oh, Kachan can cook. So maybe Katsuki helped with some of the food or whatever. He's like, well, this is going to be a Christmas party and everything. And everybody's going to be eating the freaking food anyway. It might as well be the best dang food they've ever had. So, yeah, fine, I'll cook <laughs> type of a thing. I don't know. I don't know if that's canon that he can cook or not, but it's just adorable. And, like, any of the other ones that can probably cook, like, you know, it's like maybe they can't do super good at most foods, but, like, maybe there's, like, one food that they can make that is just, like, awesome and amazing, and that's what they made for this. Um, you know, either desserts or food itself, and they're just having so much fun. And, like, Jiro's playing music in the background for all of them to listen to at one point. And, like, they're all singing along and everything. And, like, Ida's, like, directing them like a choir director, <laughs> which is just adorable. <laughs> I love Ida in that case. He's like, I'm Santa. I'm going to be a choir director. And, of course, we see their tree. We scan up the tree. We see all these different ornaments that are probably donated by some of them. Like, you know, there's, like, a purple orb that's probably donated by... You know, Mineta, there's like an All Might doll that's definitely from Izuku. There's a frog that's definitely from, you know, fr you know, Fropy from, you know, Sue. Uh, there's like this uh, weird cross thing with like a snake around it that's definitely from uh, Fumikage. Um, there's like all these other different, um, uh, you know, I'm looking at the picture right now. There's like all these other different things. There's like little candy shaped ornaments. There's like this weird little pink ornament that's probably from Mina. Um, there's like a star at the top that's probably from Aoyama in all honesty. Um, but like all these different ornaments and everything on the tree. And then we see, you know, all the, all of them bring in their presents that they're going to do for this big, you know, gift exchange type of thing, which, um, when I was watching this episode, uh, with my mom, she's like, well, what are they doing? And I'm like, well, I kind of compared it to a, a white elephant gift because here in the States and, you know, in some other countries, there's this concept of so like, you know, like a white elephant Christmas party where it's like everybody brings in like some type of a gift that is either like a joke gift or uh, it's just like it's like just like a cute thing that they have that they, you know, want to give to someone else or whatever. Um, sometimes they're joke gifts. I've been to ones where it's like, oh, there's like this giant remote or sometimes you get like a giant, you know, sometimes it's just like this you know, a, a, you know, adorable little thing that you found at like the dollar store or something like that. Or it's, you know, like a joke gift of a sweater or a shirt that's kind of funny or, you know, whatever the case may be. Different baubles, sometimes it's candy, all types of stuff um, that allows them, you know, you know, then you just, you know, you don't know who's going to end up with what gift. And they all bring the gifts together and they all put them under the, uh, in a big pile in the middle of the room. So, Fumikage has like this giant freaking buster sword that is just like uh like i love ojiro's reaction when he sees this giant freaking buster sword that's over you know fumikage's shoulders and it's just like uh where did you freaking get that and my answer is i want the sword um those of us that have already seen the episode and already read the manga and know who gets the sword and it's so freaking hilarious um but like they all start piling the gifts uh, together and they put these different ribbons on them like they're either tied around them or like taped them or something uh, to the different gifts and then they all you know they all have the different ribbons going to each one of them and it's like they don't know what ribbon is connected to what gift so it's supposed to be this like surprise type of a thing of like you don't know what you're gonna get I this is not something that I'm familiar with here in the states I don't know if this this is like something that they just do in Japan and everything which it could be I'm just not familiar with it um, but they're like, you know, they all have their gifts all set and ready and everything. And they've all got their ribbons. And, like, you see Kachan. And, like, Kachan is just kind of, like, not even paying attention. They somehow got the hat on and they somehow got the coat on him. He probably just, like, relented at some point. Like, maybe they made Aerie. Maybe Aerie had, like, these big, cute, adorable puppy dog eyes. And she just, like, looked at Bakugo. And he was just like, she was like, 
Mr. Bakugo, why aren't you wearing your hat and coat? And like, he's just like looking at this small child that has never done anything bad to him in his entire, in like her entire life. And that like the rest of the class just adores. And he's just like, he can't bring himself to not, you know, want to make her happy or whatever. And like, he just goes over and he's just like, give me the freaking hat and the coat. <laughs> and like, or like they use area as a distraction and then let Baku, and then like Mina and Kaminari jump in with like the coat and the hat. But I just think that that's something that they did. That would make perfect sense either way. Um, but like they do that and like, so he's wearing that, but like they tied like the rope around the, the ribbon around his leg and they start, you know, they all pull at the same time and the gifts fly one way and the other way and the other way and the other way. And, like, as they're getting, you know, pulled in one direction and the other direction, it's all getting pulled to the person. And then they all open the gifts. And so it's just, like, some of it's random. Uh, like, uh, let's see here. We get some... Okay, so Mina has a weight that she gets, which might have just been from one of the boys. Uh, Zero uh, gets a mirror that's shaped like a frog. That was probably from Sue. Um, Denki gets a basketball, which he seems confused by the basketball. Uh, Mineta got a box that was probably from Aoyama that has like a picture of Aoyama in it. And I'm like, did Aoyama think that whoever got his gift would want to have a picture of him? Apparently. Um, Jiro got like the sweater that someone probably knitted or whatever, or for all intents and purposes, depending on what the sweater is made out of, uh, Momo could have technically made the sweater. Um, we see Ida, and Ida is just, like, holding this, like, pile of, like, three gold bricks, uh, three gold bars, and he's just like, ah. And I'm like, okay, okay, back up here. Who, who decided to give gold as a gift? Who? Who thought... Oh, I know exactly what's going to be a great Christmas present. Three bars of gold. I don't know. I had originally thought, oh, Aoyama did that because it's shiny and sparkly like him. But then I thought that Mineta got the picture of Aoyama. So I'm like, okay, so it's not from Aoyama. Could have been Momo trying to make her, you know, trying to test her alchemy skills, I guess. Like, she leveled up in alchemy skills, so now she can make gold. <laughs> I mean... It's a naturally occurring element, and she can make metals, so it's not organic, so by technicality I would assume that she would be able to make gold, so maybe that's for Momo, or, I mean, like, I guess Shoto may have been, like, because, like, Shoto comes from an extremely rich family as well, so does Momo, so, so does Ida, they're, like, the three that come from these very wealthy, well-to-do families with, you know, Baku, you know, um, you know, Momo's parents are, like, super huge business people and everything, and Shoto's, of course, you know, his father is the number two hero, now the number one hero and everything as Endeavor, and probably has a fair amount of money and everything, and there's, of course, the gag that Shoto likes to max out his father's, um, credit cards, so maybe Shoto just went, okay, I'm gonna max out dad's credit cards, so what's gonna be a really good gift that I can put in this pile for presents? Uh, gold, gold, uh, calls, like, where, goes wherever to get the gift. Hi, um, where can I go to buy three bars of gold? It's like, you get like that cashier. Um, I don't know. Um, find a jewelry store or a bank and ask them. <laughs> like, okay, what happened with that? It's like, I don't know where that came from. I don't know who made the gold, but I want to know. So, like, some of the other ones are like, okay, that's quite obvious. Other ones, it's just like, huh? And then we get Bakugo. Bakugo's gift is just like a pair of Ida's glasses. So, was Ida's opinion of, like, okay, let's, um, what gift can I give to everyone? And, like, did he plan everything else but forget to get a gift? So he just wraps up a pair of his own glasses and gives them as the gift, I guess. Um, but, like, Izuku, of course, gets, like, this, this mochi ice cream type stuff. Um, which I, I, I kind of know what mochi is because of One Piece and Kata Curry and everything. Um, and everything. So Izuku is just like so happy about that. And then, uh, Uraka gets a keychain that is an all night keychain that is clearly from Izuku. Um, and she's very happy about that. And that, uh, keychain shows back up again later. Um, but, you know, so she got the keychain and everything. And everybody's just so happy. And then Eri got the giant buster sword that is like twice as big as she is. And Ojiro's reaction is still the same. Okay, first I want to find out how Fumikage got a hold of that thing. Now I want to know why the small child got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I find that so funny. I found that so hilarious in the manga when I read it. And I found it even funnier in the anime. <laughs> 
Um, but like, you know, so we have that moment and like, you know, so everybody's just so happy about that and everybody's just smiling and happy. And uh, then we cut to the end of the episode and like everybody's like cleaning up and, you know, putting everything away, taking down all the different decorations that they put up, which like, didn't you just leave the decorations up longer, but whatever. Okay. Like every, you know, everybody's getting all taken care of and everything. And uh, Shoto comes over and he talks to Izuku and Bakugo and he's like, well, since neither of you have a place to go in regards to the, um, you know, the internships and everything, how about you come with me to the Endeavor Agency? And, you know, we know that they, they still say yes, because I'm like, okay, if you're going to be doing an internship and everything, I would assume that sometimes being in the, you know, the, the agency of the number two hero, now the number one hero, uh, would be quite a good uh, place to be to get some good experience. Um, I am going to do a video about, like, the different internships that the students have gone on, and this will also include, like, their previous internships, like, you know, Izuko with Gran Torino, and, like, their first internships, and, like, their second internships, where they're, you know, the Zuku's at Night Eye, and Kirishima is with, you know, Fat Gum, and uh, Uraka and Sue are with um, uh, for Dragon Lady, I can't remember her name, um, but with them. And then into their current internships, where some of them are still in the same areas, but other ones have, you know, moved on to different heroes and everything. Um, so I will do a video about that, um, but I'll see where I put that. Um, since we got kind of a look-see on um, some of the, uh, uh, the next couple of episodes, we got to see a look-see at what some of them are doing in their uh, internships. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but I also, you know, eh, I mean... <laughs> I love the way that the episode is just like, just happy, happy, happy. And then it's just like, okay, you want to go into, you know, and, you know, intern with Endeavor? Sure. You know, we'll see what happens with that. I've read the manga, so I know what's going to happen with that. I'm, you know, watching the anime as the episodes come out, of course. So I know what happens there. Um, we'll see what happens with where they're going to place the, um, my hero, uh, or my villain academia arc with that and the war with the, with the, uh, liberation, the metal liberation army and everything that resulted with that. And this backstory that we get with, you know, Shigaraki and some more stuff that we learn about, um, Toga and everything and, and some other things that happen with that. So, uh, that'll be either coming up at the end of this season or at the beginning of the next season. Um, but we'll see where that lands, um, cause the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Paranormal Liberation War arc is actually quite long, and then I won't be surprised if, like, they end that, uh, that next season with, like, the, um, or they end that with, like, where Izuku leaves to go and be on his own, and then, like, the next season would be about, like, I think that would qualify as, like, season seven at that point in time. Um, cause I think this season is season five and then it'll be season six would probably be the most of the liberation army, uh, war arc. And then like the season seven might be about like Izuku going off and being on his own and like what has the class has to do with that. And I'm actually recording this video on the sixth. So hopefully the next chapter, uh, 322 will hopefully have come out or so. And I can read that and I can find out what does happen with Izuku and the rest of the class with that res resolution. So I don't know that at this point in time when I'm recording this. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, so that's what I have here for this. Uh, so, you know, I guess it kind of qualifies as a happy Christmas in July. Wait, no, June, because it's not July. Merry Christmas in June. Um, <laughs> you know, keep that, you know, Merry Christmas spirit the whole year round. Side note. My mom loves Hallmark movies and Christmas Hallmark movies, and our DVR is full of them right now. And I'm like, it's freaking June. Why are you watching Christmas movies? We don't need them right now. <laughs> um, but then I go and watch this, and I'm like, but it's an anime. It's different. It's not, you know, saccharine and nothing but sweetness the entire freaking way through, because it's not. So, um, that's what we have there. So I thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice rest of your day and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. She seems more positive these days. What you said to her really hit home.